Hi, and welcome to our today's webinar from Aberio Instruments. My name is Julia Menzel, and I'm an application scientist at Aberio Instruments, and I am your host for today's session. Our topic today is our brand new matrix detector and matrix dead. And with this, I'm happy to introduce to you our today's speaker, my colleague, Martin Meschkat. Martin is a biologist by training and has a strong background in neurosciences. Martin will explain to us the matrix detector and he will also show on our facility line how it works. And before I hand over to Martin, I would like to remind you to use the chat function for asking your questions during the talk. And with this, I hand over to Martin. Martin, we are looking forward to your talk. Thank you, Julia. Welcome also from my side. I would like to now show you the microscope. This is an Iberia facility line, a fully equipped confocal and set microscope, which also contains a matrix detector. And now I will start with a short talk about the matrix principle, and then we continue to the demonstration. Let's talk about the matrix detector. So we entitled the talk Matrix that many eyes see clearer, enhancing signal quality and brightness. This talk is basically a way of showing how we think this detector can actually help you in your science and how to improve image quality in confocal and um, especially in stat imaging that has not been there before. So what is the issue? If you are acquiring images of, for example, tissue or of thicker cell cultures that have more than one layer or even several cells that are on top of each other, what you can experience is something that looks like a lot of haze, background haze. This is blurred light, so this is fluorescent light from layers that you are actually not interested in. You are having a focal plane and there are light contributions from above and from below. And these light contributions, they are actually projecting into your image uh, and generating a haze. This is here, um, in this case, is, these are phalloidin stained caco cells from Dorothy Günzel in Berlin. And here you can already see there's, there's a substantial haze. If we now go to the stat image, this is even more extreme. Why? In stat imaging, the depletion works on the focal plane, but not on the fore and background. So what happens here is that we get a super nice, super resolution in the focal plane, but there is still haze contribution from the fore and background. Therefore, we have actually have a worse signal to noise ratio um, than we could have because we deplete the foreground, um, but we can't deplete the background. And now with the new matrix detector, you can actually get rid of this background. You can say, okay, I can discriminate foreground and background and only take the foreground and remove the background without harming the foreground. This looks like this. You see, it looks much more crisp, much nicer. You have better structural separation because you just remove the haze. And so how is this principally working? Well, as often as always, it's a um, concept borrowed from nature. Here you have a horsefly. These tiny buggers are actually quite uh, difficult to endure because they can bite and suck your blood, but they have a huge advantage. They have omitted complex eyes or compound eyes, as you can see here. So they have many, many small eyes that all see the same. Each of these eyes sees the same image, but with a slightly different angle. And the slightly different angle gives them uh, the ability to discriminate foreground and background and to also judge actually distances because the same signal is always perceived, but from many different eyes, therefore you get many more information because you have different angles for each eye and therefore different information about the image itself. So what is the working principle? In the end, you can uh, appreciate, you can estimate, just stick out your thumb from your left hand and then close your left eye, look at your thumb, then open or close the right eye, open the other eye, and then you can actually see by doing this flicking movement as here in the GIF that the thumb is appears to move while the background stays stable. So your own two detector setup, your eyes are able to discriminate foreground and background and they're also able to even judge distances by this. So how does it now look? Technically we have basically an array of APD detectors um, which we call the matrix detector and the contribution of foreground and background is basically seen on the detector depending on where the signal is detected either in the center, then it's foreground, or in the outer rings, 
then it's from outer focus planes. And we can take this information now and actually calculate what is foreground, what is background, subtract it, and therefore remove the background without touching the foreground. The foreground has the same intensity as before. So we actually use this by opening up the pinhole completely. Yeah, so the, the pinhole is open maybe to 10 AU. All the light comes in onto the matrix detector, the foreground, the background, and then we use all the light information and extract our foreground background information and then we just selectively remove the background. This is a typical conventional stat image of this um, phalloidin stained epithelial cells. Um, this is a collaboration with Professor Dorothee Günzel in Berlin. These beautiful phalloidin labeled cells are a 3D cell culture grown on a filter paper and they are actually quite large in diameter. You see we have here a nice dead image, but we have a lot of blur and a lot of haze in this image. We want, now want to get rid of that image by using the matrix sector, and this looks like this. We actually measured the background, removed the background, and get much better signal separation also here in the blow up of this lower right part of the corner. You see on the left hand side a lot of contributions from the outer or surrounding layers. On the right hand side, the cleared matrix image. Another typical example, not only having an increased clarity, but also having an increased optical sectioning. You see here um, an image acquired with stat as a number of planes from one nuclear pore complex. And you see here that, especially in the lower right part of the image, you see a lot of faint blurry dots. These are contributions from the other focal planes that are actually shining into our focal plane of interest or into our focal plane. So what you have here is basically a lot of background that you can't easily separate, not even by just decreasing or uh, increasing contrast, decreasing LUT. This will look strange and will harm your foreground as well. So we can't really get rid of that background. If you now use a matrix detector, we can measure the background, remove the background, but leave the foreground untouched. So what you see here is we get better optical sectioning by removing the out of focus blur and just putting the light that's actually in the focal plane into the center, preserving that completely while removing unwanted light. This is especially extreme here. On the left hand side, a conventional confocal image, you see the in focus light, but also a lot of out of focus light. On the right hand side, you see the matrix image after matrix acquisition with an open pinhole. So we acquired all the light and then we rejected the background light. It's still all in the raw file. You can, of course, acquire it or, or play with it and do it, use it for deconvolution. But in the end here for this, we just removed it. This is, of course, a tremendous benefit also for 3D stat. If you look at the upper image, 3D stat has um, an excellent resolution, but is always having the issue of enhanced background haze from different layers. Um, and this is now, of course, also tackable by the matrix detector by removing this autofocus blur and getting much better 3D stat. As a consequence, you can also do nicer 3D renderings. On the left-hand side, the conventional set image with a lot of blur and a lot of haze, actually. On the right-hand side, the matrix image where you have an enhanced 3D rendering because you can actually remove the haze and only the crisp structures stay focus and stay in the image. So if it only would work for cells, that would be already cool, but that's not always what you want to have. You want to have more complex tissue like neurons on the left-hand side, or you want even, for example, brain sections, so whole tissue slices that are thick and that have a lot of labeling. So why do they have a lot of labeling? Because in biology, usually the magic happens where there are many, many proteins. The magic happens where there's dense labeling of proteins. For example, in the synapse, you see a lot of proteins in a very cramped space. And these proteins, and they're fluorescent labeled in immunofluorescence image, will basically disturb each other by having this background haze we saw before. So what we can do here is basically by using the matrix detector, we can remove that haze, especially in thick samples, especially in complex biological samples, and get much better clarity and much better idea about the sample. This is not only true for these, but also for the before mentioned cell culture. Even a flat cell can have very, very dense areas. 
such as, for example, this vimentin and phalloidin uh, or actin state cell. Yeah, you see here that the vimentin is close to the nucleus, very dense. There are layers on layers of, of filaments on top of each other. And you can't really separate them. Yeah, because there's the blur from these other layers. But with the matrix detector now, you can actually take it and remove this autofocus blur and resolve them individually. So resolve individual vimentin fibers much better. Yeah, so you actually get an optical decrowding. This of course also works for mitochondria or, or other densely labeled, densely packed structures. So this is really a key advantage of doing STAT in parts of the cell that was not possible before. Uh, because you can actually now get super resolution close to the nucleus, super resolution where you have dense label by just removing the out of focus blur. Of course, you can only use this in one color. Uh, you have the possibility with the spectral detection in our facility line or um, STAT microscopes to use the detector, the matrix detector for all the wavelengths from DARPI to deep red. That's all possible. That's what we did here. We took this cell, um, we labeled spectrum, Bassoon and Homer, and we just did a three color matrix imaging. And what we see is we get a crisper, better results or better, better clarified image than before, than just using conventional stat. So in summary, what are we learning? Um, the matrix detector improves several aspects of your imaging and can help your scientific question by getting clearer and brighter images. This can help in different tissues. It can work or it works in normal tissue, in a thick tissue, in cell culture, in 3D cell culture. So everywhere where there's dense biological labeling, the, you can profit from the matrix detector. The matrix detector is increasing the optical sectioning by actively removing out of focus blur and just leaving the light in the image that's actually in the focal plane and that is the one you actually want to perceive and want to acquire. Yeah, So you can basically by rejecting the other uh, out of focus blur portions you can improve optical sectioning and of course you can also improve clarity in an image. So in a 2D or in a 3D stat image you can by using the matrix reduce this haze, get much better 3D reconstruction and get better and nicer images compared to before. So with that, I would like to finish the talk and I would suggest no, we go over and I show you how it works in the software, how you can actually use the matrix with your sample and benefit from this in the next part. Now we switch to the measurement software to start our measurement. I already have a sample on the microscope. What I will do now is I press the autofocus search and what you can hear is a faint beep. This beep tells us we are now roughly in focus. Now I can go to the light box called software, our intuitive software solution for simple and straightforward stat and confocal imaging. First, I will go to new sample, select specific dyes we're in here, we have in here, for example, in this case, star green and DARPI. In these dye chips, the lasers and settings are preset. I will now call this sample something, in this case, Cyto plus DARPI. And I can also name the individual channels. In this case, the star green channel is Vimentin and DARPI has the DARPI signal. I press new overview and select an overview size for a tiling. In this case, 400 by 400 with 5% overlap. Now I will set settings for a fast scan. I'll go to pixel size and set 300 nanometer and press live. And with the live imaging, um, this microscope will now prepare with the spectral detection moving to the right position for the DARPI and star green signal. Then I have my signal on the right hand side. You see I'm nearly in focus. I need, you know, use my mouse wheel to actually scroll a bit. And what um, I do then I adjust settings so a little bit more green, a little bit more blue, and then I can move my mouse or I drag the window to actually move um, the stage. And when I'm happy with the position, let's say here, I press stop and press scan so I get my tiling scan. What we'll do now is basically 
I overlap the channels and it will do a spiral and show me the surrounding of a couple of hundred microns, in this case 400 by 400 microns. We see a number of cells with Feynman and Delpy labeling and I already see below there's an interesting cell which you might have a look at, um, which is currently in division. So first we let the image run through. In the upper part you see the measurement time running. And once the image has finished, we can basically select our region of interest. So now let's take these two cells here. I can press and control focus in there and have a look at the cell. And then I'll basically switch off the star green channel. Um, and then I will first do an APD image with DAPI, press live to get a live um, image, focus a bit with the mouse wheel, and then I can actually go and adjust the additional settings here. I will say accumulations are 10, and this means we get a lot of signal, and then we'll do the same image with the same settings, just now with matrix, so we'll copy the image, um, activate the matrix, and we'll also open up the pinhole as the matrix sector will work as our pinhole. We open the confocal pinhole completely, and then I select both images and press with shift, I select both, and then I press scan to do the sequence. First, the APD image, followed by the matrix image. On the right hand side, you see we get interesting structures. We get a three dimensional nucleus and the chromosomes. And now the APD image has finished. The matrix takes um, a couple of seconds to align itself to the appropriate wavelength, in this case, the DAPI wavelength uh, of the DAPI spectrum. And then we can go on to the matrix imaging. Or well, it's also changing, the pinholes also changing then automatically from one AU here in the unfocal image to 10 AU in the matrix image as we want to collect all the data from the matrix and all the light. Now the matrix image um, is taking place. And while this is um, processing here, the um, alignment, we wait a moment and see, aha, uh -huh. the images already look slightly different. They look uh, already a bit crisper in the matrix because um, not all components of the matrix are used for visualization here. There's already a, a slight improvement in the um, background addition. So left-hand side APD, right-hand side matrix. You see on the left-hand side, if I click here, no matrix options, just the typical open to image J options on the right-hand side matrix. And you see I can have the matrix pinhole. We can show this here. This is live on the graphic cards calculated pinhole. So basically, um, after measurement pinhole, where I can say, okay, I would want to simulate how much pinhole I would like to apply to the sample. And now I can also go for uh, matrix post-processing. Matrix post-processing is actually a way of subtracting the background. So differential detection here is the method of removing the background and uh, leaving the foreground um, untouched. You see here, image become much crisper. I zoom in a little bit and you see most of this haze is gone and the separation is much, much better um, in the nucleus above and also in the chromosomes as well. You see here, we somehow have this nucleolus, I assume, uh, being much more pronounced here with a differential detection and matrix pulse processing of 1.2. We can now add some deconvolution on top, in this case called sharpening. So we set two cycles of sharpening and we get an even improved um, image with more edge contrast and uh, a nice image crispness. You can clearly see here most of the haze is removed. Now we go back to the overview. We look for another cell because we would like to also to investigate the whole thing with the green signal. So let's take, for example, hmm. Let's take this cell here below on the left hand side. Again, we switch off the other channel, in this case DAPI, and we do a live scan to first do a focus. I press live, the spectral moves a bit to adjust for the um, green APD image. 
and now I can here focus a bit with the mouse wheel. And once I'm happy with the focus, let's say, for example, here we have the nucleus and we have quite considerable amount of, of blurred out structure. I press live to let the image run through. Here are the blurry, dense parts. And now I rename this to APD star green, copy the image, and then I call this matrix star green. And first I set the settings for the APD image, then I copy the settings, and for the matrix image, I just add on the matrix detector, and I again open up the pinhole to get all the light. And then I again take both images, click shift, and then scan, and then first the APD image, a normal APD image will be acquired, followed by the matrix image. You can already nicely see here, with one AU standard image, you see a lot of blur, you see a lot of overlapping structure, and you see a lot of out of focus light that is actually inhibiting a clear image. Now first, this image, now we switch to the matrix in a moment. It will do that in the background. It will acquire the matrix image. And then I will basically, once this is done, show you the effect of differential detection on the green wavelengths here. You already see we have much less blur than in the APD image, yeah? so already because we are only using the, out, uh, the, the inner rings of the matrix for first-hand visualization. But if we now do a direct comparison, left APD, right matrix, um, I can adjust the contrast a bit here to see it better. And then we do some matrix post-processing. Again, this would be GPU and again 1.2 differential detection. And you can clearly see we get a much clearer, much crisper image. The nucleus, for example, the blur in the nucleus is completely gone, and also the overlapping structures are really reduced. Again, adding a little bit of sharpening will even increase the clarity even more, comparing now here this densely labeled area, left APD, right matrix. So, with that, um, let's take a different part of the sample, we'll now close this sample with the AM Dapi and the a barrier star green, and there's also a barrier star red in the sample. I create a new sample now with a barrier star red. Um, in this case, um, this contains nuclear pore complex proteins, so it's NUPS are labeled, and um, I will again do a quick overview, again 400 by 400 with 5% overlap uh, and uh, appropriate pixel size and excitation. You see here we have a, a pixel size of 300 to, be, to have fast scanning. I press again live to focus a bit before I start my tiling scan. And when I found a focus position which I find interesting, here a little bit more excitation, I press scan to do the round and the rotation. Now I get a fast scan, of course, because of one channel, and I get nicely a selection of nuclei, which I can use for the matrix demonstration here. Once this is done, I select uh, a nucleus and um, try to visualize this. For example, this one here, I press control, and use a magnifying glass, and then I select a region here, um, and then I copy that region to have the exact same size and put this below here. One will be APD, one will be matrix. So upper one is the stat image with the APD. So let's say here an excitation of 10% is a good and 15% stat power with 30 accumulations and 40 or 30, let's say 40 nanometer. And then if we go for the second image, I copy the settings uh, from the first image and just adjust the matrix, add it on the matrix and open up the pinhole. And then I add a little bit more excitation for the matrix because it's mostly optimized for the green and blue. I select both images 
and I press scan. So the upper part of the nucleus will now be, be acquired with the APD, standard APD, and the lower part will be acquired with the matrix detector. We see here our uh, set image, and you see also the blur on the outer part of the, of the nucleus. Um, and now we can compare this to the matrix image. After the first image is finished, now the second is automatically starting. Uh, I can see here again this blur, and the blur is what we want to basically get rid of. Now the matrix is image is acquired, you see in the upper left corner, and I drag the APD image to the matrix image, and we can put them side by side. Now this is the raw the, um, visualization of the matrix image without any post-processing, and now we can actually go here and do again a differential detection. Let's say again 1.2 and a little bit of sharpening, like just the contrast, so we see it a bit, bit better, and we can see here that this blur on the sides, but also inside the nucleus um, is heavily decreased. Let's have a look for another nucleus where we see the effect maybe a little bit um, more intense. Again here, upper part of the nucleus, one region, and um, copying this, um, I first focus. So now here we are. Let's, for example, take this lower part where you see um, there's a, quite a considerable amount of haze. I copy that image, I pull this down, adjust it to be bright. And then I just copy the settings from before. Uh, so I just drag them onto each other. And now I press scan again. First, we get this dead image again, 40 nanometer pixel uh, with the APD. And then we get the next image with the matrix detector. This one is finished. Now we switch to the matrix. You see images slowly building up. Of course, now I take the APD image, drag it into the matrix image. We have them side by side. You can already see here there's a difference in, in background. And if I now do again here, differential detection, in this case 1.2, we can of course do also more, but 1.2 is fine. You see a clear step here that the central part of the nucleus is really black in the matrix image and clearly visible in the APD image. So we really remove these inner parts from the imaging. So the autofocus light was actively removed. So this now it looks nice. And you can really see here, if I even increase sharpening, I can notch this up a little bit more and get a nice, crisp and optical improved image. So now the second sample I will now put on are these caco cells you saw during the presentation. I'll put the sample on. And then I press the autofocus again. You hear the beep? Now we're roughly in focus. So these are now epithelial cells from Dorothee Günze, a collaboration um, with Berlin basically. And these beautiful cells are a 3D cell culture grown on a filter paper. And they have um, a quite three dimensional structure. And they are a good example for. Uh, for 3D tissue-like culture. So let's um, start again. We are at the main part of the, of the software. We're going to a new sample again, and we will select the appropriate um, dye. In this case, Starret. So I take Starret, um, and then we'll name the cell. In this case, these are epithelial cells, and labeled is phalloidin. So we're visualizing actin. This case with a barrier star red. We press new overview. Again, 400 by 400 for 5% um, overlap as before. And we open this for a quick overview scan. Now we go for the pixel size. The pixel size is again a little bit larger. In this case, 300 nanometer. We have fast scanning. I know the sample is relatively bright. That's why I go down to 
percent laser excitation. Pressing live, we're already in the focus quite a bit, focusing with the mouse wheel here. And now I'm, that's fine. I press live again, run through, and I press scan for a spiral scan. So we see a lot of interesting structures here, and we wait for the 400 by 400 micron scan. Uh, it's done, it takes another seven seconds, as seen up there. And then, okay. Hmm. Let's look for a region. Let's say, okay, we take this cell here, um, here, we start the ROI, and then we basically say, okay, this is image one. We activate the matrix, um, give a little bit more excitation, in this case 0.6%, a little bit of more accumulation, and we open up the pinhole completely, so we get all the light and can decide later on what to do with the light. We press live and focus again. And then the quick calibration is done. And you see here now we have our matrix image confocal. We can focus a little bit with the mouse wheel. And then once this is done, let's say here, uh, we press live again, image run through. Then we'll increase accumulations a bit so we can acquire a lot of signal and get a good um, image. Press scan. And now we acquire a lot of light with the matrix detector. Um, and we can do some differential detection. So some matrix post-processing, which will get rid of some of the blur. So I take this now. And I have the matrix pinhole and the post-processing is option matrix pinhole, of course, for simulating pinhole, matrix post-processing for the post-processing. Here, pinhole, you can, for example, also simulate what would have happened if I put 0.2 AU or 1 AU, which can help sometimes in uh, judging later on the AU after acquisition. We reset this to a standard value, and this is our raw matrix image. Now, this can also be post-process, so we go to matrix post-processing based on the GPU. We copy the image first, so left hand is same image now, left hand is a raw, right hand is a GPU variant, so the GPU post-processing. We go to 1.2 differential detection to remove some of the background. Resolution is to auto resolution as it is based on the wavelength, as it's confocal image, so it's automatically calculated. And then once the differential detection um, runs here, we see already, okay, there's a significant decrease in blurriness all around, especially the central core. This is now a rather soft variant, so we could also go stronger, but now here we're interested in um, having a good reliable image. We add on some sharpening, so some more um, deconvolution, and we get a nice improved image compared to the raw image on the left-hand side. Uh, so much more contrast, stronger structures, and less background blur. Maybe looking for another region here in this complex sample. Maybe we take, let's say, we zoom in here and we take this region. Now we adjust the ROI a bit and I copy the settings. Yeah, so I drag from image one to two and now the settings are copied and I can immediately start focusing now with the copied settings. Um, I'm fine with, the, with this. And then I can start the stat imaging. And I go to a little bit higher power here again, 15% stat power and 25-ish resolution of accumulations. So we're not doing any averaging, we're doing accumulations because the sensors are so good that they have very little background. I do 25 accumulations, a pixel size of 40 nanometer. And then I press scan and we get a matrix confocal and a matrix stat image both, as I said, phalloidin in these caco cells, the epithelial cells. So now, the right image does not look so different, despite its stat. It is better in resolution. You can see that. You can see individual small structures getting better. But a lot of the stat effect is basically caught up, or is basically it's snatched up by the, um, by the background haze. So the background haze is overshadowing the matrix or the, the stat effect and can only be resolved by the matrix. So we again copy the images here, yeah, we copy the matrix confocal, we copy the matrix stat, 
And then let's see how post-processing works, basically first on the confocal image. Yeah, we expect at least some effect here. Um, if I go 0 0.5 is so really low, if I go to 1.2 again, I get some effect here. Yeah? So I get a reduction and blur. The structures are a little bit more sharp and more crisp. Yeah, so we already get something here. But if we do this for stat, the effect is even more dramatic. You see really here we have much better, um, much better separation and the structures are not diving into this haze. So we are really getting a better image. I'll change here the color map a bit. So just um, visualize uh, um, the situation. Now the image up there has changed back to the differentially textured image because it's initially the same. So I press matrix pinhole again to have the raw image. But now you see here the raw image up there is very blurry and hazy instead. And with the matrix post-processing, we get a much clearer and nicer image with two clicks. Yeah. Even if I now here reduce the uh, contrast, you don't get the same level of crispness as you would get with the matrix sector. So it's not just simply changing the contrast, it's really about some um, image improvements. Adding some sharpening on top will also get us a little bit more crisper images and an interesting um, information about the fine structure of these perloidin or actin labeled structures. Let's go for another round. So we have here, for example, this region here. That's a wing leg, wing shaped structure. We again, we can copy the settings here from image two. We shut off stat for a moment and focus. So now images is acquired. So we focus here with the mouse wheel. I'll say, okay, we are more or less happy here. And I let it run, run through once more, press live. And then I can basically just copy the settings. I drag image two onto image three. And I press scan. And what's happening is basically now I get my stat image on the right, my matrix stat image, and my matrix confocal image on the left, still raw and unprocessed. If I now process this, for example, with the matrix pinhole, you can do that live. You can see more or less, of course, light. And I can also get a little bit better um, separation. On the right hand side, the stat image, we here see a clear stat effect. So that's completely clear. Uh, there's a resolution increase. Um, and, but still, we see a lot of haze. So if I now go here to GPU post processing and put 1.2 roughly, we can really see we get a nicer, crisper, sharper image by removing the background via the matrix post processing. Yeah, so here in large, you can nicely see compared confocal with a normal pinhole to matrix, in this case with the matrix post processing. I put this channel away for a moment. I copy this channel, and here is the comparison to the matrix pinhole. There is, of course, also the ultra structure on the left hand side, but it's hidden much more in the blur compared to here where I can go for um, a much crisper and nicer image. So here I get improved stat quality as well. Now, as this is done, um, we're going to another region here. Let's say this one here looks interesting, this rose-like shape or this whirl-like shape, I again copy my settings. I go with confocal first, confocal matrix, and I can now define a little stack to do some 3D stat. So I focus here a bit. You see on the left side here's the focal part. I fix now the first plane. Now I focus again, I fix the second plane, and I have 1.6 micrometer in depth. Yeah, and this is now basically my stack, my small, and I can now set my settings are similar to before. I push the slider to complete 3D. I increase the pixel size a bit for speed um, limits and um, reduce accumulation so it gets a bit faster. Now I press scan and I let this run in the background. While this is running, we can have a look again at the shape uh, from before. This one here where you can see, okay, this is my um, my GPU based uh, calculation. And we can, of course, here play with the differential detection. We can go lower, we can go higher, which might be interesting for um, uh, for the defined um, process of post processing. Um, 
And you can really see the more I subtract, the, of course, the darker the image gets, but the, um, the better we can remove the background. And you can really play around here and go to the upper limits and still get a very nice image. Yeah. Here again with sharpening, um, we can really go to the edge now here. This we have to cut. But in the end, the post processing is really flexible and you can really use it as, um, as a point and click tool and don't do much. So here with the, with the confocal on the left and the matrix on the right, we are really done with our stack. We wait for it now. We already see with 3D set we get a much better Z sectioning, but there's still quite some blur in this structure. Yeah? We can open it in ImageJ, these files, if I like. I can send them to SVI. I can really directly post-process them. I can export them as TIFF. That's all possible. Um, the file format is also completely ImageJ readable, so you can also do your calculations as you'd like. Uh, or all this is accessible, including OME metadata. So this stack is basically run through now. We can have a look, actually, we can scroll through. You see here, okay, we get this nice shape. And um, in 3D set, this is even more pronounced. You see much finer structures, and you can really see um, that this is improved. So let's go here for differential detection, sharpening. You already see, oh, well, I get much better background subtraction, and it's even more extreme uh, in the 3D set. You can really nicely see here, okay, we get much nicer 3D structure. We get much less haze. And that's what you can also saw, um, or we can see in this presentation, um, that you basically can get better 3D reconstruction based on this result because you actually redo, remove the background without touching the foreground. So really the foreground is still completely fine and bright and the background is basically gone. So here, uh, that's the overview. I think we'll, we'll now finish here and um, I will now change the sample and what we can now do is basically we can go back to the discussion and maybe have a look at questions you had while we are doing the demo and looking at, um, at your questions and your input. So I'm, I'm looking forward to, um, together with Julia, ask or answer your questions and go into the discussion. So maybe I'll now go back to Julia. Thank you, Martin, for this really nice talk and the nice demonstration. I was really amazed by the difference of the stat and the matrix stat images. So these images looked really cool. And during your <coughs> talk, we got a lot of questions from our audience. So let's start with the Q&A session. Our first question, is the matrix stat compatible for live cell imaging? Thank you, Julia. Absolutely. Um, one of the key features is live cell imaging. We already published something on Twitter with um, EGFP Spark labeled proteins in living cells where we did matrix together with confocal imaging. So it can be a real key advantage, especially in the blue and green region, to use a matrix for your live cell imaging experiment and, for example, get rid of these overexpression um, nodules you have or you can have in the cell or just separating very densely labeled areas. That's absolutely possible and uh, hopefully it will be used a lot. Thank you, Martin, for this answer. So definitely it's compatible for live cell imaging. The next question is about sample preparation. Do I have to prepare my samples in a special way? Absolutely not. Standard samples, you take the sample you have on your confocal that looks, for example, hazy, or where you see that you have a lot of dense labeling that you can't really discriminate well. You just put it on an, a barrier microscope with a matrix detector and you can just image as normal. Standard samples and no additional processing needed. Thank you. So no special sample preparation is required. Um, yes, so another question, is every matrix image deconvolved? Very good question. You always acquire all the raw data. So you take all the lights coming in, it's all detected on the different modules of the matrix sector, and then you can decide what to do with it. Either you leave it as it is, then you have a sum image, which is very similar to an APD image, or you can do some differential detection to remove your background, or you can do some sharpening, meaning you can do some deconvolution, and you can, of course, also combine this. 
Yeah, so you can also uh, mix the differential detection with the sharpening as I did during the demonstration. So you always get the full raw data. You can use it for advanced deconvolution, but you can also leave it as B, so full flexibility. Thanks for the answer. So Martin, our audience is wondering, is alignment required before imaging with the matrix detector? A key advantage of the matrix detector is that you can use it on any wavelengths from deep blue or from very far blue to deep red. So from dark to star red, everything's possible. The key here is that the matrix will always take the current channel, channels, the fluorescent channels, align to them accordingly and have you have the perfectly aligned image. This takes a couple of seconds, not long, and is only needed once, once you set up the channels and the spectral windows. And once this is done, usually once or twice in experiment, you're good to go and this alignment is not needed anymore. But the automate, uh, alignment is completely automated in the box. You don't need to do anything. The microscope does everything by itself. All right, alignment is done automatically. That's cool. Um, our audience was wondering, why do we need to open the pinhole for scanning with the matrix detector? Because we want to have all the light, everything from the sample that is emitted somehow in fluorescence, we want to collect. And then the matrix is its own pinhole. The matrix works as a pinhole because you just say, okay, I collect all the light on different elements and then I can decide which elements to use for my image and which elements I would like to use to this green foreground background. So that's why we need an, or we require an open pinhole because we want to have all the light to have the optimal matrix effect. So the matrix is its own pinhole and you can later as you get all the data and then later on decide what to keep. All right, with this, we are at the end of our today's session. So first of all, I would like to thank Martin for, for giving the talk, um, for, for the presentation. So I really enjoyed your presentation. Um, we could not answer all the questions, so we will answer remaining questions via email later. And if you are interested in our microscopes or if you are interested to test the matrix detector by yourself, even with your own samples, please let us know. And with this, we are at the end and I hope you enjoyed and I hope you, you join us for our next seminar. Stay healthy and goodbye.